Hey everybody, I'm just making a short video to show you guys how to set up ArmSim on Windows and uh, how to get started coding in ArmAssembly. So you're going to want to go to this website, the link in the description, but um, if you're in my class, the professor also provided a link to this um, in the homework document. You should be able to just copy paste that or click it or whatever. They do provide a build for Linux, so if you're running Linux, uh, you should be able to get this working as well for Mac. Like they say here, um, it's just not, they don't have a build available for Mac. So you're going to have to run like a Linux subsystem or a Windows VM, or if you dual boot, you're going to have to boot up into Windows or Linux, um, get this working. So you click here for the Windows binaries and you should be able to download the installer and open that up. So you have to be a little careful here. Don't hit install. For whatever reason, you need to hit advanced, install for all users, and put this wherever you want. I actually install my files on my E drive. And we'll just let that install. Now you should be able to open ArmSim. Okay, so for whatever reason, ArmSim does not put a shortcut in your start menu. So um, you might have to go to your program files directory and open that up and run armsim.exe. Beautiful flash screen that they show. And here's armsim. Okay, so now let's go over how you get started coding in arm assembly. I've got a VS Code instance over here and we're just gonna search the marketplace in the extensions tab for arm assembly. And you want to find this one here by Dan C. Underwood. Just hit install. And what this is going to do is allow you to have syntax highlighting for ARM assembly. Now, all you have to do is make a new file. And you can select a language and just select ARM. So now you're ready to get started. Okay, so I have our little test file here. And we're just going to go over some of the basics of ARM assembly. So ARM assembly programs have two main sections, just like a lot of other assembly programs. Um, if you came from Computer Science 313, then uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about already because we did x86 assembly in that class. Um, but dot data stores all of your variables that would be loaded into a random location in memory, or I should say an unknown location in memory um, when the user executes your binary. And then there's the text section, which uh, just contains all of your program code. So we'll use dot data and we'll declare a variable and you can do that with a label. So we'll just say var one is the label and we'll say that is a word containing some number. And that's it. That's how you declare some value. So if you want to declare other types of values, you can say dot byte or dot keyword or dot D word. Um, there's even dot ASCII Z with one I that indicates a null terminated string uh, made of ASCII characters, which we also learned about in class and you've probably learned about multiple other times. So next we'll go over the text section. So the main instructions you'll be using for homework number three are LDR, STR, and some math operations, as well as a couple branch instructions. Um, so ARM is a load store architecture, which means that in order to do anything with values in memory, you need to load them into a register beforehand, and then you do math on them in the register or whatever you want to do, and then you use STR to store them back into memory. So let's go over the LDR command, or instruction I should say. We can load into register zero the location of var1. This is literally the memory location for variable one, it's not the value 1 through 37, it is a pointer, essentially, if you're coming from C or C++, and it stores that pointer into register 0. So now we can load the actual value into register 1 by saying load the value pointed to by register 0, that's what these brackets mean, into register 1. So now that we have register 1 equal to 1 through 37, we can do some math. So let's put a different number into register 2. So we'll move into register 2, the value 3, for example. And then what we can do now is we can actually do some math. 
So let's add register one and register two, and we'll store the value in register. We can store it back in register one, actually. You can use the same registers that you're putting in your operands as the destination register, which is good for saving space. So we'll add register one to register two and save that in register one. So now that we've done that math, we can store the result value back into memory. So in order to do that, you use the str command and the value we want to store is in register one and the location we want to store to is still in register zero. So this will write back the math that we just did or the, uh, the resulting number from the math that we just did back into variable one, which will overwrite 1337 and should give us 1340. So uh, one note real quick is that if you want your program to exit relatively gracefully in ArmSim, you're going to want to uh, have a couple things going on here. Um, your first instruction should be a push LR. Sorry for my typing. Wow, that was pretty bad. And down here, you're going to want to pop LR and then BXLR. And what this does is it just saves a return location um, and then pops it off the stack at the end of your program and branches to it. You don't really need to worry about these because they're just sort of obligatory. Um, but essentially what this will do, in arm sim at least, is it will branch to the address zero. And when you branch to the address zero, arm sim knows that your program is done executing and it will halt. Um, so to differentiate those instructions, we'll just put some white space. So this should be a completed program. Let's run it in arm sim. So we're over here in arm sim and we have our test.s file. And we're just going to double click on that and load it in. And as you can see, we had no errors or anything. And it's ready to execute. So we have a few buttons here that we can use. There's step into, which we won't really uh, get into right now. There's step over, stop, and run. And run will execute your program all the way through. Um, stop will just stop executing your program, obviously. Uh, step over will let you just step through instructions one at a time. So this is really useful if you're debugging a certain instruction, something's going wrong somewhere in your program at a specific point, and uh, you need to watch your registers or whatever to see what happens. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna hit run and we're just gonna let this go. So as you can see, uh, we finished control transfer to a legal address zero, which just tells ArmSim to stop. That's what I was talking about earlier with the push pop and BX. Um, Anyway, so as you can see, we used R0 as our address for variable one. We'll view this, make sure we're viewing this in hexadecimal. So we're looking at all the values of our registers in their hexadecimal form. And uh, we want to check our memory, see if uh, we added three to 1337 and got 1340. So we'll view memory and we'll go to address 1024. So as you can see at 1024, we have 53C. And if we pull up a calculator and go into programmer mode, type in 53C, we can see that we did in fact get decimal 1340 in that memory location. So this is great. This means our program is working. So that's essentially it. Those are the very basics. If you want me to cover some more instructions or anything like that, just uh, leave a comment or ping me if you uh, have my Discord. And uh, just let me know, and I'll make a follow-up video and show you how to do branching and, and things like that. Uh, but that is it for now, so thanks for sticking around, and uh, good luck on that homework assignment.